everybody video here for you today we're going to stay on the ancient america theme i've had some messages from arkansas and i've done a few videos from arkansas including one on the toltec mounds but that was i think about three years ago maybe even a little more so i'm going to do another one on that i've learned a lot more in the meantime this seems to be a very important impressive site down here here's a site today pretty impressive archaeological park down here but there are several mounds still remaining. There are mounds that have been wiped out by history, but this is one of the more impressive sites down here that we have in ancient America. Here is what the site looks like from overhead on Google Earth. This is what the site looked like a long time ago. Some very large platform mounds in here, a wall encircling the whole place. Here's a look from the water at the site here. They have some information signs up here. Not sure what happened to her right there. Did she laugh her head off or something? That seems to be distorted a little, but here is one of the mounds here. Very good size platform mound. Here is a look from the parking lot. They have a nice park here, good preservation. I assume this is a museum right here. Maybe hear from somebody who has been here, but Compared to some of the places that are totally lost to history, this place seems pretty well preserved. Here are some people enjoying the park and a large platform mound behind them. I think there is about two or three very large platform mounds here. Just one of these would have taken thousands and thousands of man hours. A lot of work was put into this site for sure. Now, why was this place called the Toltec Mounds? Let me just read the sign they have right here at the park. The common belief in the 1800s was that the local Indians were not civilized enough to build mounds. The builders of the mounds were mistakenly thought to be people from Mexico, such as the Toltecs, and this site was given the name Toltec. Investigations in the 1890s revealed that the mounds were not built by the Toltecs, but by the highly organized ancestors of local Indians. Archaeologists have named the ancestors the Plum Bayou culture. And there are so many names for these ancient America cultures that go back, you know, at least a couple thousand years, the ones that we're familiar with, the Dina, Hopewell, Mississippian, Woodland, Coles Creek, and there's so many of them, it's all very confusing. Here's a drawing of the site done by Henry Lewis about 140 years ago. Shows the large mounds and also shows a lot of smaller mounds here at the site. Here's an old blurry pic, how the mounds looked in the late 1970s. Is that the way pics from the 1970s look now? Old and blurry? Oh, a little depressing. I will leave the link for this PDF below. Here is the site plan of the Toltec mounds, as they are called. The larger platform mounds, and then here is Mound C right down here. We'll take a look at that. But Mound H, a lot of work was put into this as far as the archaeoastronomy. Mound H seemed to be where you would stand to get the alignments set out by this place. But Mound C, a smaller mound, they think this may have been for burials. But it's shown right here in this old pick. That's where they think the people were buried at the site. Here is a pick of a cypress tree that was found, I believe, near the waters at this site. These cypress trees were made into canoes, and I believe that's what you're seeing right there. But it says, during excavations, archaeologists uncovered fragments of a conch shell from the Gulf of Mexico, as well as copper from the Great Lakes area. And the copper from the Great Lakes is seen to be throughout all of the ancient United States. Here are some excavations at the site here. I believe those are animal bones there. Here is an assortment of things, pottery, a few uh, stone tools, grinding tools, it looks like says excavations indicate that the Plum Bayou people used several types of weapons for hunting, but primarily relied on the bow and arrow. River cane growing nearby was most likely used to make shafts for arrows. Archaeologists at the site have uncovered many stone tools, including arrow points, knives, drills, awls, axes, and other things. These tools were made through the process of flint napping. Here's a look at the site plan, and they say this place got going around 1,400 years ago, roughly, in that area, sometime between 6 and 700 AD. But here, they used Mound H, they theorized for a viewing platform for the alignments of the summer solstice, the equinox, and the winter solstice. 
based on how the mounds are laid out. I don't have a problem with that. That fits with other mound sites. Here, there is a large embankment wall around the whole site here. That must have took thousands of man hours to build. Maybe just as long as the platform pyramids, who knows, but that's that takes a lot of work. But it says here, the biggest mystery of all surrounding the Plum Bayou culture is why they abandoned the Toltec site around 1050 AD. So maybe they lived here for about 400 years. After all the hard work put into this site and the countless ceremonies held here, these people simply disappeared from the site. We do not know where they went or why they left. And that is kind of the story with some Mayan uh, occupational sites also around that time period. But was it drought? Did they move? Was it disease? Was it warfare? Something caused these people to leave the site around a thousand years ago. But at this place, just like at Stonehenge and other sites around the world on the spring equinox and the solstice on a few of these special days, there are celebrations here where people view the special alignment, as Graham Hancock calls it, the marriage of heaven and earth. These days were very special to people, and that was a cross-culture thing. So here at this site, this must be on the spring equinox when the sun rises above the main mound here. And this is where Mound H used to be. This is the viewing platform where they saw these special alignments. Here's a look at one of the main mounds here. That'll give you an idea of the size of it. Here is that same pic, except with people here walking at the bottom. Now the big mounds here, this is mound A down here. This is a little longer than it is square. But this one up here seems to have a perfectly square base and top. And the one thing that I notice, we are aligned perfectly north here, is that the top of this is laid out like this, as you can see here. So it appears what they were doing is the corner of the square at top and probably at the base originally we're aligned to the cardinal directions here. Here is a pick. Looks like it comes from winter. This is a smaller mound C. They think it was for the burials. And then the taller mound B there in the background. Here's a look at some of the many stone tools found at the site. Axes, plummets, hammer stones, abraders, boat stones, anvils, and other things here. But a lot of artifacts were found here. Some of these appear very well made. Here's a look at many of the arrowheads and projectile points they found at the site. Made out of quartz crystal, chert, and novaculite. Is that how you say that? Here is one story I found, the artifact of the month. Here is a look at what they say is an owl effigy. Is that what that is? Or could it be aliens? There is a different view of that artifact there. Pretty intricate for a small item there. Here is a look at excavation work going on here roughly 40 years ago. Edward Palmer from the Smithsonian was here about 130 years ago, and that's when this place came to attention when he published a story about his visit here in a publication that came out in 1894. So what does this all mean to me now that I've made a lot of ancient America videos and I can relook at this place? Well, this place was certainly a capital for a large area of ancient America. Just how far? Well, that's anybody's guess, but one of the more impressive mound sites we have for sure. That is a video on the Toltec site down here. This is just southeast of Little Rock. If you've been here, leave me a comment. But that seemed to be a pretty important place in ancient America, probably a capital of a wide region of ancient America. Hope you thought that was cool, and you all have a very nice day.